live here at the Observation Gantry at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Teams are preparing for the launch of Artemis 1. I'm Alyssa Lee, SLS Social Media Specialist, and I will be joined today by Dr. Sharon Cobb, SLS Associate Program Manager. Today, we're going to be answering your questions about the Space Launch System rocket that is launching the first Artemis mission. You can ask us your questions by dropping them in the comments. It, now I want to take a second to look at this view that we have behind us. You can see Launch Complex 39B, where the integrated SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft stand. That rocket behind me is 322 feet tall. That's equivalent to a 23-story building. Artemis 1 is currently targeting a launch on August 29th, and the two-hour launch window starts at 8.33 a.m. Eastern. SLS is the most powerful rocket that NASA has ever built, with a thrust of 8.8 .8 million pounds. It'll lift off this launch pad and send Orion on its journey to the moon. Artemis 1 is going to test SLS and Orion systems before flying astronauts on Artemis 2. This uncrewed test flight is just a peek at NASA's next generation moon missions. Under Artemis, NASA is sending the first woman and the first person of color to the moon, ushering in a new era of space exploration for future missions to Mars. And, and it's just like, I wish you could just feel the energy here at NASA Kennedy. It is buzzing with activity and excitement, and we're all so antici in anticipation for this launch. The Artemis One countdown actually begins Saturday with a call to stations. And during call to stations, engineers and technicians are going to head to their consoles and begin working operations across the country. Launch Control Center at Kennedy, Mission Control Center at Johnson, SLS Engin Engineering Support Center at Marshall, just to name a few. And the Exploration Ground Systems teams will be doing final checkouts of the rocket, the spacecraft, and ground equipment. And you can watch the Artemis One mission live. Launch coverage is going to start at 6.30 a.m. Eastern on Monday, August 29th. But before we get into that, I would like to introduce you to my special guest with me here today, Dr. Sharon Cobb. Now, if you're just joining us, Dr. Sharon Cobb is the SLS Associate Program Manager, and we are live at the Observation Gantry at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida as teams prepare for the launch of Artemis One. Sharon oversees the design, manufacturing, assembly, and testing of SLS. And if you have any questions for her, you can drop those in the comments below, uh, and we will get to those here shortly. So, Sharon, it is an honor to have you here with us today. I want to start with, I mean, we have this amazing view of the SLS rocket. It ju did just get done raining, so it might be a little bit overcast, but we have to take advantage of this site. So can you tell me a little bit more about the Space Launch System? Well, the Space Launch System is the world's most powerful rocket that's ever been built, and it was specifically designed uh, to be the only rocket that can take Orion into a lunar mission. So we've got a tremendous capability that will allow us to do complex missions and learn how to send humans back to the moon to learn how to live and work there for long duration flights. Yeah, and we're excited to see it launch this first Artemis mission. This is going to be an extraordinary sight to see. So I guess I want to talk more about you and your role next. So what does an SLS Associate Program Manager do exactly? Well, I assist Alyssa with just any kind of activities associated with the programmatic and the technical um, development of this rocket. Um, I've been working on it for a while, and I just love the opportunity to work with the team of scientists and engineers that have built this rocket and that have tested it and have it ready to launch Monday. That sounds like an exciting job, and what an amazing point in your career to be here to Absolutely. witness this. <laughs> unbelievable. It is unbelievable. <laughs> so what can we expect to see during launch day? Well, there will be a very choreographed um, countdown timeline, and then the first thing that you're going to see on the pad is at T-minus six seconds when the RS-25 engines start to um, have the vapor come out from the bottom. And then at T minus zero, the solid rocket boosters are going to ignite, and we are going to have liftoff 
of the Space Launch System on its orbit to lunar exploration. Yeah, that's going to be a great sight. I mean, you know, we've seen videos, and I, I've actually witnessed a few booster firings. We've witnessed some RS-25 testing. And to see that all come together now, it's going to be really amazing. So can you give us a little bit of a timeline of the Artemis One mission after liftoff? Sure. After we get through liftoff, the first two minutes of flight will be powered by those solid rocket boosters. And then at eight minutes into the flight, the core stage and the RS-25 engines will drop off, and the interim cryogenic propulsion stage will have a trans will, will um, continue on into lunar orbit. And then at an hour and 36 minutes in, um, there'll be a translunar injection of the Orion spacecraft. And then about two hours in, Orion and the service module will go into their lunar orbit and, and we'll have an incredible mission going over 40,000 miles beyond the lunar surface, further than we've ever been before. Wow, that sounds like an amazing mission. We're all very excited to see it launch and to get that data back. So now we're going to take a look at some of the questions that our viewers are sending in. Just a reminder, you can drop those questions in the comments below. We are still taking them, so there is still time for that. So let's look at this first question we have here. What can we, ex what can we expect to feel on launch day? So what is that feeling going to be like? Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like nothing any of us have ever felt before. This is the largest rocket that we've ever launched, and so the ground will rumble. You'll hear the sound waves come through the air. And people for miles away will be able to hear the roar and feel the launch of this special rocket. Yeah, I imagine the vibrations here <laughs> are going to be really fun to see. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it's, I think it's going to be really bright to see, too. Absolutely. The, uh, the, the engines themselves, when they fire, it'll be bright and just a beautiful sight. Yeah. And how powerful is the SLS rocket? Well, at liftoff, the SLS rocket will be have a, a thrust capability of 8.8 .8 million pounds, and it'll be able to lift 59,000 pounds to low Earth to low uh, lunar orbit. So, really powerful rocket. Yeah, I, and it needs that power to send it right to the moon. I'm Absolutely. Assuming, yeah. Not only that, with this kind of lift capability, we can send large payloads at the same time we send crew on some of our future missions. So it's a great capability that will be the foundation for the future. Mm -hmm. And what does the weather look like for launch day? I know you guys have been looking into that a little bit. So. Well, as with any day in Florida, there's some, an opportunity, there's a chance for some showers, but right now we're looking good. We have. Um, a pretty good percent chance um, that we'll be able to launch, but we've got a two-hour window, so we're feeling really good about our ability to be able to launch on Monday. That's great. We we are all crossing our fingers and toes for that. All right, and and can you just remind us one more time when is launch? Launch is Monday, August the 29th, and our our window opens at 8:33 a.m. and there'll be a two-hour window. Perfect. Yeah, we definitely want everyone to tune in for that. Absolutely. So. Really It'll be a site you don't want to miss. Uh, uh huh, for sure. Now, why is there not a crew on Artemis One? Well, for this first mission, we want to test out all the ground and all the flight systems that we need to ensure that we are safe when we're ready to put crew on this. We'll be taking lots of measurements. We have lots of sensors on the rocket, and so we'll be looking at that data when we get it back and make sure that we understand all the environments that the rocket will see so that when we put crew on the next flight, it'll be safe. And part of making it safe, I think, is we're we have some secondary payloads that are going to be telling us a little bit about the astronaut's safety. Is that correct? That is correct. Inside the Orion capsule, we have Commander Moonkin, who is going to be um, outfitted with lots of sensors. We also have radiation sensors. And so we'll be taking a lot of measurements about what's going on inside that capsule so that when we come back, we'll know exactly what those astronauts will experience. Yeah, I'm sure Munikin's going to have the ride of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, he is. <laughs> and when will crew fly on SLS? Uh, crew will fly on SLS on the Artemis II mission, and so we'll get everything back from this, and we'll set a launch date once, we, um, once we're a little bit closer to uh, understanding what happened on this flight. Mm -hmm. And we're very excited for the first woman and the first person of color to land on the moon through Absolutely. Artemis. It's going to be a really exciting mission for that. All right, and just a reminder real quick, we are still taking questions, so so drop those in the comments. You know, Dr. Sharon Cobb, just a reminder, she's the SLS Associate Program Manager, so she can answer all of our 
SLS questions right here, right now. That's what we're doing, Q&A. It's really exciting to have you here. In front of the observation gantry, we are in front of the SLS rocket. So Absolutely. just wanted to throw that reminder out there for everyone. And I'm going to look at some other... Uh, While you do that, Alyssa, let me remind people that this is just the beginning. We will be upgrading the capabilities of this rocket, and so with Artemis IV, we'll have an even more powerful upper stage, and so we'll be able to take crew and even larger payloads once we get to those missions. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me, for that upgraded upper stage, what is the difference between this upper stage for Artemis I and what will be on Artemis IV? What will be on Artemis IV is called the Exploration Upper Stage, and it'll have 40% more lift capability, so we'll be able to carry much larger payloads uh, than we can with this mission. Wow, that's really awesome for future missions. And what sort of experiments are on the rockets? So in addition to just the data that we're going to get from this test flight, there are 10 secondary payloads, CubeSats, that will be deployed as we get, um, as the Orion capsule separates and goes on to the moon, they'll be deploying these um, really unique experiments that'll be looking at everything from radiation mm -hmm. to the moon, back looking back on the Earth, and even an experiment looking at the sun. So a great opportunity to get some really exciting science out of this mission, too. Yeah, and I imagine that that science is going to help not only with Artemis, but probably other future missions as well, maybe to Mars? Absolutely, and that's ultimately what we're doing. We're trying to learn to live and work on the moon so that eventually we can send humans to Mars and we'll have all the technology and infrastructure that we need to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take another question here. Why are we doing a test flight of SLS? Well, the test flight is really important to make sure that we understand all of the data that we get off of the mission. We'll be comparing that to models that we did before the mission, and so that's a great way to verify that the design and all the requirements have been met and that we're safely ready to fly crew on the next mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important that we put the safety of astronauts at the Absolutely. front end, for sure. And we've done tremendous tests on the ground during this process, but we will get so much more data when we fly this, this rocket through the atmosphere, so yeah, great I'm sure opportunity. you and your team are very excited to look at that data. We are, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's almost as exciting as, as the launch, but not quite. Yeah. Yeah. So for everyone watching at home, are there cameras on SLS and Orion? There are a ton of cameras. We'll be watching from all possible angles, and there are little black squares on the side of the boosters. You probably can't see them from here, but those are um, photogrammic um, targets that we'll be able to take those cameras and be able to track exactly where the rocket is, and so we'll understand its flight pattern. A lot of really interesting information, so it's not just about watching it launch, but it's about getting some data off of it, too. So it's not just a big old chess game. No. There's, there's a meaning to the black Yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> gotcha. And how can we watch the mission for people at home? You can watch it from a number of channels, but you can go to nasa.gov, and uh, we will have a live stream there. It'll be on Facebook, just on a number of different social media sites. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I think NASA TV, the NASA, NASA app. Uh, the NASA app's a great one. I, there's That's a lot of great. cool things on there, including our SLS 3D model is on the NASA oh. app. You can actually put SLS in your own living room if you want to. <laughs> that app. It's a very cool one. All right, and here's another little technical question. Uh, why do we use solid and liquid propellant? Well, it's a very proven history that we carry over some of these technologies from the space shuttle program. The solids are the most extremely powerful way that you can get that initial lift off the ground. And then the liquids are a way that you can get even longer distances once we get up past the atmosphere. So very different purposes for each one of those technologies, but both critical to us getting into lunar orbit. I bet, yeah, for sure. So, so here's kind of an exciting one that someone's asked. How does it feel to be a part of the Artemis team? Uh, it's really hard to describe what it feels like to have been a part of this. I've been with it almost since the inception, and to see the team come together and to see the many accomplishments and to see all this incredible hardware sitting on the pad today ready to launch has just been a dream come true. It's, it's just an incredible opportunity. All that hard work is coming to fruition. It really is. And, and how cool that our Artemis generation is going to see a new era of space travel to the moon and, and to Mars. Uh, Wow, it's just incredible to witness. Um, so I know that you mentioned, or we, we could see on the rocket that it's orange. Yes. Now, 
We've seen in photos that this was a yellowy, creamy color before. Correct. So why does it get so tan in this Florida sun? <laughs> well, the color that you see on there is from the thermal protection system. It's actually a foam. And the longer it sits out under the sun, the oxygen from the atmosphere turns it that color. It's almost like getting a suntan. And so it um, <laughs> doesn't impact the performance at all, but it does make it a, a really pretty color. Yeah. So it is a foam insulation. It is. That it is a foam. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a really cool fun fact. All right. And how did you get started at NASA? Um, I had a great opportunity when I was in college to come spend the summer with my faculty advisor in graduate school. And I got to do experiments in the labs at NASA. And what turned into be a three-month rotation um, has been an incredible career. I have just, uh, I can't do what incredible, exciting things I've gotten to do. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, kind of going off of that, can you tell me a little bit more of, of your path with Artemis? How did that start? Well, um, at Marshall Space Flight Center, we had the responsibility for the design and development and of this space launch system, the rocket. Mm -hmm. And so from early on in the program, um, I was able to be a part of it and help lead the team and help provide the resources the team needed to make this possible. Well, that sounds like a very exciting career that you've had. Yes. We're excited to have you well, in the SLS program for sure. <laughs> All right, and why is this called Artemis? Why is it called Artemis? Yeah. Well, Artemis in Greek mythology is the sister of Apollo. So it's a great connection to our past, but being uh, the connection to our future is even more important. We'll be placing the first female and the first person of color um, on the lunar surface with this mission. So a great nod to our past, but I look forward to an incredible future in space exploration. And what an exciting future it is. Yes. Oh, it is. It's so exciting. Gives me chill bucks. <laughs> All right. And the last question, is there anything that you want to add? Um, there is so much that's gone into this. When you look at the rocket out on the pad, it represents American ingenuity. It represents manufacturing capabilities and people from across the country that have been able to make this possible. And so when you look at that rocket, think about the team that spent hours and days and were time away from their family to make this all possible. And it's truly going to be America's rocket, and we just can't wait to see it lift off the launch pad. I know. We can't wait here. I mean, the whole SLS program, everyone at NASA is so excited for this this launch. It, oh, it just I gives me chills. I know. <laughs> Well, thank you for answering those questions for us today, Sharon. It thank was an you. honor to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you did miss any part of this live video, there will be a replay available of it on NASA's Space Launch System Facebook page and NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center YouTube channel. So I just want to remind you that Artemis 1 launch is coming up on Monday, August 29th. We have a two-hour launch window that starts at 8.33 a.m. Eastern, and NASA's official launch broadcast will begin at 6.30 a.m. Eastern. So be sure to tune into that on NASA TV, the NASA app, various social media accounts, and on the agency's website. The SLS team is so excited for this launch, and we hope that you will witness it with us. Until then, we'll see you again soon.